Hello, welcome to the second installment of the lecture on the life of Paul. We're going to start a, first off with talking about names. The Hebrews only ever had one name by which they knew someone. And so Saul, S-A-U-L, would have been the only name the individual who became the great apostle um, had. Romans, however, had a naming system where there were three names associated with an individual. A praenomen, which was a first name, a nomen, which was a, a family name, kind of like our last names, and a cognomen, which was a pet name. And so people were always known by, by three names. An example would be from the historian Tacitus. We know of him as Tacitus, but that would have been his cognomen or his pet name, and it literally means silent. And it's a joke on the fact that he actually wrote history and was a famous orator, and so he was definitely not silent. So the, the word Tacitus is a, a joke about, he was called by a joke name. So his real full name was Publius Cornelius Tacitus, Publius being the praenomen. Cornelius being the nomen and cognomen, the cognomen being Tacitus. When we talk about Paul or Paulus, as it would be known in Greek, we're actually talking about a cognomen and a pet name. Where was Paul from? from Paul was from the city of Tarsus, which was the capital of the, the Roman province of Sicilia in Asia Minor. And if I've got my audiovisual aid here and can get it to focus. This is my my map. Uh, we've got Greece up here and this is present day Turkey. Uh, Sicilia is here in the corner uh, by by Turkey that would have been a province. Um, of course Israel is is right here. And so we're talking, whoa, about Paul living right here in the corner in the province of Sic Sicilia in Tarsus. And a province was essentially like today's states. So if we think about the United States and each state being about the size of a province and each state having its state capital, that's kind of what Tarsus was for Sicilia. If Rome was the empire, Sicilia was a province which functioned like a state, and Tarsus was the, the capital of the province, or the equivalent of today's state capital. During the reign of Augustus, this particular um, uh, capital was given the privilege that its residents didn't have to pay taxes to Rome. Imagine not having to pay any uh, U.S. taxes or state taxes. That would be pretty pretty sweet. The citizens of Tarsus were very cultured. They liked philosophy, they liked the liberal arts, and in fact in Paul's writings you actually you may find uh, references in Ehrman to the fact that he draws on, Paul draws on Stoic philosophy or, or other uh, philosophical systems. Tarsus has been pretty much described like a university town a town that is just, you know, you walk down the street and professors are, are thinking and students are discussing what they heard in classes. It's just sort of a, a really intellectual and exciting place to be. That was, that was what Tarsus was. It was also very prosperous as a city because um, there was a, a, a plain outside of the city that allowed for farming and they grew flax which was woven into material, and so it, was, it had a very good economic base to it. If Paul was a citizen, and, and we know from uh, the, the documents uh, about Paul's life that he was, then it means his family owned property because you had to be a property owner to uh, have citizenship. And in Acts 21, 39, there is a, a, a reference to he is a citizen of no mean city. Let's talk a little bit about um, citizenship in general. 
Acts 22:27 says Paul was born a citizen, so he's not first generation. His, his dad was already a citizen. Um, there was probably some conferral for, of citizenship in honor of uh, uh, outstanding service to either his father or grandfather, which meant that, that Paul's family would have been part of the social elite in, in the town. The citizens often had a lot of great rights. Um, everybody wanted to be a citizen because there were benefits in it. If one was arrested, for example, one couldn't be whipped or uh, suffer uh, any sort of corporal punishment at the point at which the arrest was made. And there was a point where uh, uh, Paul protests being beaten by rods, Acts 22:26, which wouldn't have been something that he should have suffered as a, a citizen. Citizens could also get a free trial and a fair trial in Rome before the governor. How did one become a citizen? Well, children had to be registered within 30 days of their birth, and at that point they got a pair of um, folding clay tablets. They folded so that the, the clay wouldn't, and the impressions in the clay wouldn't uh, rub off, so it was sort of like a hinged tablet. And uh, it was a, a notice of birth registration the father had to go before the governor of the public and the public ref record office, sorry, and uh, make a claim for the infant to be a citizen. And then two witnesses had to certify the birth registration certificate. So Paul was a citizen. Hi, right, we're going to switch uh, a, little, a few uh, directions here and talk a bit about who Paul was. In Philippians 3, 5, Paul describes himself as a Hebrew of Hebrews. And what he's talking about here is his uh, religious affiliation. This means that he was circumcised, and he probably conceived of himself as being descended from the tribe of Benjamin, which was part of the southern kingdom when uh, Israel and Judea split. His name Saul, S-A-U-L, might have been drawn from the name of King Saul, who was a Benjaminite and the first king of, of uh, Judea. We only know Paul's Jewish name, Saul, from Acts. Paul himself never uses it in any of his letters. He does describe himself as a Pharisee. And when he talks about himself as a Hebrew, he means not just any Israelite. We know from Acts 6.1 that there was a, a contrast or tension between two parties of uh, Jewish adherents. They were the Hellenists, H-E-L-L-E-N-I-S-T-S, and the Hebrews. Um, you can think of them almost as political parties. The Hebrews were conservatives, and they would have used Aramaic in their worship services as well as in their daily speech. The Hellenists, <coughs> pardon me, the Hellenists uh, would have spoke Greek and worshipped um, using the Greek language, but they probably may have spoken a little bit of Aramaic in the home. The word Hellenist comes from the word Hellas, which is the Greek name for uh, the Greek peninsula, or the, the Peloponnesian peninsula that is Greece. So Hellas uh, means Greece. So Hellenistic means Greek-like. And the entire world uh, became sort of Hellenistic uh, when uh, Alexander the Great executed his conquests. So essentially, Paul was a Jew who was born in a Greek sitting, speaking city and was a Roman citizen. He was likely a Hellenist. Uh, E.P. Saunders in the book Paul, original title of a book on Paul called Paul, he uh, speculates that the apostle 
um, possibly even knew Latin as well. Uh, people in the Middle East are often very multilingual. We here in, in the United States don't necessarily always capture um, uh, that knowledge very well because we tend not to be um, naturally multilingual um, ourselves. Throughout the various letters, Paul reveals other bits of information about himself, and I'm going to quote a lot of scripture verses here, but I am also going to post the notes so that you will be able to uh, have those scripture verses noted from, from the notes for this lecture. What he reveals about himself. He confesses that he persecuted Christians in Galatians 1.13 and 1 Corinthians 15 verse 9. He talks about his own conversion in Galatians 1.16 and in 1 Corinthians 9.1. He calls himself an apostle, one sent. Um, apostolos means um, um, one, one who is sent in Greek. And that comes up in 2 Corinthians 11.5. There is some indication that he had some sort of an illness in 2 Corinthians 12, 17, and Galatians 4, 13 through 14. And I've heard all sorts of speculation as to what this illness was. The philosopher Nietzsche even talks about the possibility that Paul was an epileptic. Um, pretty much everybody tends to project on Paul whatever illness runs in their family or they themselves have, have experienced. So there's something wrong with Paul. Then he talks about having met some of the original 12 disciples in uh, Galatians 1, 18. And this seems to have been about three years after his own conversion. He supported himself with trade. This comes up in 1 Corinthians 4, 12. Uh, Acts is where we learn that it was tent making. So essentially, by his own class, he was middle class. He is thought to have been unmarried due to his comments about celibacy in 1 Corinthians 7, 10 through 16. And we don't really know how or where Paul died. The book of Acts leaves him in prison on his way to Rome, but doesn't tell what the results were of his trial in and his letters indicated that he intended to travel one day to Spain and was looking for financial support to get there. And so that's from Romans 15 to 20, 15 verse 24, so we don't know uh, whether or not he made it. But that is a small, short thumbnail sketch about the life of Paul. Thank you. Hi, I just want to make a point of clarification about the, dis the discussion Hebrews and Hellenists. Paul, by his background and how he acted, was essentially a Hellenist. In the scriptures, he calls himself a Hebrew of Hebrews. What he's trying to do there is use a label for himself that he wasn't. It would be like a Republican calling themselves a Democrat in order to uh, make himself appear more palatable to the people he was trying to convince to his point of view. So even though he calls himself a Hebrew of Hebrews, he's actually acting um, and, and lived more like a Hellenist. Thank you.